Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We're here at the National Association of Women in Real Estate Businesses. I'm Desiree Patton, the CEO and founder. We're joined today by SBA Sherry Coates. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Desiree. You're welcome. Uh, she's with the Santa District Office here in California. Um, she's responsible for three different counties, the largest, I believe, still um, of the districts in the United States. Close. We're we're um, in a very high density area for a lot of businesses. So okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I think you're there close. There are there are some major metropolitan areas that are pretty dense as well. Okay. Anyway, well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Um, so the idea is today we're going to be talking about um, starting a business um, and with the SBA's help. I mean, it's very pivotal, especially for women in business and real estate because we have so many different industries. Um, the industry itself for real estate truly encompasses so many different facets. When we talk about it, you can be an attorney, you can be a CPA, you can be a contractor, you can be a brokerage, a title company, an escrow company. Um, uh, the all different layers of in there because anything that has to do with real property transfer is in the real estate sector. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the biggest questions I get say, well, I'm an attorney, what does that have to do with it? And you're like, everything has to do with it. Um, because California is one of the few states that actually uses escrow companies instead of attorneys to close the files mm -hmm. on any kind of real property. So what I'd like to talk to you about is about um, starting a business in um, real estate. And I want to focus today a little bit on starting a, let's say, a janitorial service here in California um, or anywhere in the nation. Uh, what does it really take and what does the SBA do for you to actually sit down with you and, and, and start a business? So, so what's some of the, let's say, the top three things that you would come to mind and, and let's evaluate those. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, you really need to have the plan right up to this point. I'm assuming it's all in the, in your head, okay. but you need to get it on paper. And even though it may not actually be turned over to anybody else, uh, it's the business plan, which is really, it's about a three to five year roadmap of what your business consists of, how you're going to get new customers or clients, um, where your m uh, money is going to come from, what your projections are, and how you want to grow it what your marketing plan is. So it encompasses a lot of things, but it's a very, very important document. Also, you there's the mechanics of opening up a uh, starting a business, which is, you know, you're uh, getting your tax ID, um, you know, registering with your state, uh, opening up your, um, your um, a, a business account with your bank, and all the, you know, putting your, your sure. sign or your thing. Yeah, exactly. There's all of that that, that are the mechanics. <laughs> yes, those are the mechanics of starting a business, but then there's all the others. Uh, it's knowing what you don't know. Okay, so mm -hmm. I want to start a business, but it's really important for me to know what am I good at and what am I not good at. I might be really good at, um, uh, you know, knowing where to get my business, but I'm really terrible at uh, doing the finance part of my business. Or it might be the other way around, or there's so many aspects to owning a business. It's not for the faint of heart. It is difficult, but there are lots and lots of resources out there to help. I, I think the pivotal thing is that you say that you know, it's not the faint of heart, but I think that also the perks that go with it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. See her face? Tell absolutely. Her she uh, you know, uh, owning a business is a dream of a lot of people, and uh, you know, two out of three net new jobs are started by small businesses mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. country. So that's really an important statistic. Where the where, you know small businesses are the drivers and the engines of uh, the main staple point, as you want to call it, the meats and potatoes of the industry, mm -hmm. um, or, or the economy in that fact. And and the beauty of it is, is that with small businesses you can right size and you can change and navigate so much easier than you can for a bigger company. Nimble, right? Yeah, very nimble. <laughs> right. Um, and and that's beautiful. So. I'd like to touch on a few things that you talked about as far as you have your business plan. Um, I think the most important part of that is accountability mm -hmm. by having a projection because if you put it down, having it here, you're more in a hobbyist and a dreamland. Absolutely. Um, right. And putting it down on paper, you can more visually see A plus B does not equal C and that you can actually dissect it and break it down. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm a gardener or a janitorial service, let's say. And so we're going to start off with just me, myself, and I, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go into a cleaning business. It's very, very hard to find good cleaners that stay in business because it's not the highest paying job. 
um, that is so highly needed in our industry to making sure that properties are staying clean, um, or whether they're commercial, industrial, residential, uh, retail, it doesn't matter, um, and that they have the, the right um, uh, accessibility in case there's a problem, like there's a flood or whatever mm -hmm. that goes through it. So uh, if I can start my own business, um, and you said about having my game plan, so you know, I don't know how much things are gonna cost. My labor's free, it's just me. So my question to you is, is that, so then I really gotta focus on um, how I'm gonna buy my supplies, how I'm going to um, ensure my supplies in case there's a liability. Um, I'm thinking how I need to make sure that um, the vehicles I'm going to use um, or vehicle um, in case it breaks down. Mm -hmm. Who am I going to have as a backup in case I can't get there from point A to point B because typically you don't have a brand new car. You might have a used one or borrow one from someone. Um, and then what kind of, you know, when you use your supplies up, who's going to pay for those reimbursement of those supplies? Mm -hmm. um, and how I'm going to market myself, word of mouth, you know, social media, and, you know, pay for an ad on a billboard, you know, those are all budget things. Um, the other thing I'm thinking about is if, if I'm in my janitorial service on my own, um, what hours I have to work. Mm -hmm. You know, typically um, janitorial services um, for commercial buildings, you have to work in the evening. We're in residential, you work during the day typically, um, or you work weekends. Um, and I've seen a lot of janitorial services really work two jobs. They have a normal eight to five job mm -hmm. doing one thing, and they do a janitorial service in the evenings or nights um, to make ends meet until they can do a full time job and getting that done. Yes. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. Um, one of the other things you were talking about is is that um, you know the, the, the nimbleness of it. Um, I think there's also some negativity to that. Um, definitely pros that you can move the ship very <laughs> easily and mm -hmm. navigate it through the waters, but when it's too nimble, um, <clears throat> it allows you to get off target and off focus of what you need to do and where you need to go. Um, so, another reason, good reason to have a business plan, keep you on track. <laughs> excellent point. Um, question is, is that by starting a business, let's say I do my business plan and everything's looking good, and we sit down and we, we map it out and how we're going to make our pennies ma match and go through. Are you just be my mentor? Are you going to continue to talk to me as I, I, as I go through and get my business plan approved? Yes and no. Well, but it's, uh, we like to think of it more of like a team that's helping small businesses. It isn't just our offices and anybody can go on sba.gov and uh, find local resources and actually connect to their local um, district office and connect to somebody like me or one of my colleagues that's an economic development specialist. But the SBA also has funded resource partners and this is a network of mentors and counselors mm -hmm. that can sit one-on-one -on -one and uh, work through things with you at no cost. There's SCORE, which uh, is a huge organization of, that's an all volunteers. They come from just about every background of industry you can imagine. And they try and match you with what that mentor's expertise is. You can call uh, and may set up an appointment and you can go to several different SCORE mentors. Maybe this week you want somebody that's a specialist in marketing and next month you need help in your financials, understanding, um, uh, or your projections. And maybe another time you want help with your social media marketing. So it can be, um, you, you can tailor it to what you need, what your needs are. But then there's also small business development centers, we call them SBDCs, and they're uh, all throughout the nation as well. And these are, um, these are counselors that do the same, something similar. They'll uh, help get you if you need um, help with getting your contracting certifications. They can help you navigate that. They can help you put together your package for a business loan. Um, a variety of different things. They and then there's women's business centers as well. They're throughout the nation and they are partially We're funded growing. by the SBA. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So uh, it's really good to connect and have a team of people that are helping you. That they're uh, all of our interest is, is really to help that you as a business. Right. So you don't succeed. get any paid profits. Mm -hmm. to, you don't get a kickback. You don't get all that stuff. So it's all so, about it's all about the love of what you do and giving back. Right. Um, the one thing I do know about SCORE is, is that it's your retired executives. Um, last count I heard there was like 14,000 uh, SCORE members throughout the United States. And the beauty is a lot of them are actually, you know, from the, uh, the top 500 country, I mean, uh, companies, companies. In, mm -hmm. in the United States. 
So I remember back in the day um, when I was going to college a few decades ago, um, the we had one of the top um, gentlemen from uh, Procter & Gamble. Mm. And I was like going, so Whoa. you're like uh, <laughs> number three in command and you're teaching at a JC yeah. an evening class on business development. Where else can you rub elbows with? high sea level people like that exactly right? <laughs> and you're all like okay i'm 16 years old and you're teaching me on business development like whoa um and that's the beauty of it is is that you know if you want to go to goldman sachs if you're doing depending on what you're into you're actually sitting down and talking to people who they feel like they want to give back to community mm -hmm. they want to go back and say you know i paid my piper i really want to give back to what i've got out of it and how i can fast track you um, one of the things that I love to tell a story about is, is that when we did one of our Women in Housing Financial Fitness Roadshows in Dallas, I'm going to say probably two, two and a half years ago, um, sat down with a, a lady and we were, we were talking and Donna was her name, I, it escapes me her last name, and she was talking about how she took a handyman, $30,000 a year handyman, converted him within two years into a thirty million dollar wow. contract. Wow, that's incredible. What I didn't tell you is, is, is that she had been a contracting officer for twenty six years uh, with some, some yes. stuff up here. And you got it. Very advantageous. And so not only and and she she worked for the SBDC versus mm -hmm. then being a score, but she knew the right people. Mm -hmm. She knew how to package it. She knew exactly how to. What she did on the flip of the table right. as a contracting officer, these were her number one point two three four five that she looked for. So she knew exactly how to have him fill it out. Mm. At the end of the day, he got a twenty million dollar, a thirty million dollar contract. That's great. Yeah, that's you know, and uh, there's not only of uh, quite a few C level um, mentors and counselors, but also serial entrepreneurs. They've sometimes opened up three, four, ten different businesses, mm -hmm. franchise owners. Um, boy, some of them, I can think of some of them that uh, they started a small company, grew it, sold it, started another medical device company, started it, grew it, sold it. And they keep doing this over and over again. So they know the struggles that a small business owner faces. Mm -hmm. They can totally identify and really um, you know, give them right some, through. absolutely give them some, you know, great information and advice. Well, I, I think you hit on a very pivotal point in <clears throat> women in real estate, when we, or women in business in real estate, when you talked about how they franchise it. You know, in the real estate community, no matter if you own a brokerage, no matter if you own a contracting company, if you own a... Um, you know, some kind of aspect within um, the continuum is, is that franchising is a very big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and so by having, you know, it, people don't realize that even though you're in a franchise division, that actual franchise branch can be a woman-owned company, even though that the partner oh, yes. goes. Yes, that's it. right. That's right. Um, and that's pivotal in, in, you know, part of the subset of how you set up back to square one is how you set up that company. It's not just about thinking in the box of how am I going to get from my janitorial to setting up point A to point B, it's going to, how am I going to allocate who's doing the work? Me being the woman, and we talked about I being the only woman and the only person in the company, obviously I'm a 100% woman-owned company, but then do I bring in other partners? Do we want to dilute that based on, do we want to take away the fact that I can be a set-aside or a woman-owned right, business? Right. Um, Keep it at 51% or more. <laughs> right, 51% or more, mm -hmm. own, operate, and manage. Um, I can have five women versus just right. me. Um, I can set aside to where, or put it into a program to where, you know, if I want to bring a gentleman on board, I have two women and a guy, and we do mm -hmm. 23, 30, 40, whatever, and do 10 over here. Um, but we've got to keep that 51% on operate and manage. Um, so that's very important when you set up a business. Now, the idea is, is that, I, I think the beauty of it is that going through the SBA, farming you out to an SBDC, having the WBC over here, and then having SCORE, look what you can be long term. So when you talked about our original business plan being five years, you could have saying, okay, see where you can be in five years down the road or ten years down the road. Mm -hmm. um, How do I get from here to there? Right. And mm -hmm. the beauty is, is that by aligning yourself with a really good score mentor, you could really see the book of business this way 
versus a long-term goal that goes with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really pivotal to it. Um, some of the other points, let's go on a couple more points that I think would be very pivotal. Um, how would you assess, um, in our industry, how would you leverage the SBA with the dynamics of changing? And what I mean by that, especially for the real estate community, we're being um, right-sized in a lot of ways where the small businesses are having really feeling its hugs and pulls of the compliance issues and how much change is happening. You don't know where Brenbo is coming, you know, who's moving, who's not. Doing who's more with less. Doing more with less. Um, doing um, and, and the cost of doing business is so much more, just mm -hmm. not doing more with less. So how do how would I go back to the SBA and leverage my business so where I'm not just doing janitorial services, let's say, in the normal realm of doing it? What does the SBA offer that can help me expand that horizon? Do you mean um, ex like growing the business, mm -hmm. maybe? Like, like maybe doing networking or, or what oh, kind of program? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, I would highly encourage um, any kind of a small business to be around other businesses. There are all kinds of workshops and events that are put on either by our offices or our funded resource partners. Many of them, actually most of them, are at no cost. This is a, a place where you can get into a room with other people. You can find uh, uh, possibly new prospects. Uh, networking is very important. Your chambers of commerce, um, the cities, check with your individual cities and see what mm -hmm. kinds of business development opportunities that they have. Uh, so that's a place to start. And you just never know where that meeting can lead to. Well, I think you brought up a very, very valid point. I mean, that's where an interview started is we actually went into the C-suite positions. We went to the government. We actually went on a national level versus on a local level. Um, and the idea of having, um, you know, it doesn't take that much to take a bus if you don't have a car to get to it, but to go to your various different chamber of commerces for each city, there's also different kind of diverse um, uh, opportunities within these different chambers of commerce mm -hmm. that are out there. Um, and then from there you have all different, they then will align you because everyone who's coming into a city, let's say, has to file a business plan or some kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, like register or something. Yeah, yeah the infrastructure, yeah. what they're doing, yeah. how they're doing. Right. So, oh, we just had a real estate broker. We just had a gardener come in here. We just had a CPA come in here that really is very unique that actually speaks that kind of language That's or right. does this or does it's that. It's like getting the word out. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the beauty of all this is it's totally free. Mm -hmm. And people come and go. Companies come and go. And by keeping that word of, of what we call in the business relationship, it's two years in the government space. Um, and this is not federal. This is local government. Mm -hmm. And even though the Chambers of Commerce is not necessarily are set up to be um, registered that way, you have a lot of different offshoots to go with that right. to be able to operate as an owner mm -hmm. or as a brokerage. Um, you don't. You can actually be a sales agent or a realtor, um, depending on where you're at. And and the idea is, is that by doing that, you can hire and fire a broker as the, the broker of record mm -hmm. as an employee. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, is that, and then from when you get into the teaming part, you have no affiliation with the ownership of the brokerage, mm -hmm. but you yourself have to own your own company to file your taxes because right. you're not an employee. Right. You're still independent. So basically it's the same idea as how you set up your company That's to start right. with. So I guess the bottom line moral story here um, in closing is, is that talk to the SBA before yes. you do anything to do your business development, to do how you're structuring your company. Um, and that way you can lead you into the next phase of doing the micro loan we just talked about or go into the development of what we have. So thank you very much, Jerry, for joining us. Uh, I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Desiree. And uh, thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again.